Unit 2 Humor Reading A The Never Never Nest The characters Jack Jill his wife Aunt Jane Nurse The lounge of Jack and Jill's villa at New Hampstead The essential furniture consists of a table on which are writing materials and two chairs as the curtain rises the lounge is empty but Jack and Jill come in immediately followed by Aunt Jane and this is the lounge charming charming such a cozy little room and such pretty furniture we like it you know handy place to sit in and listen to the radiogram oh have you got a radiogram as well as a car and a piano? Why? Of course, Aunt Jane. You simply must have a radio set nowadays. And it's so nice for me when Jack's away at business. I even make him move it into the kitchen so that I can listen to it while I cook. Sit down, Aunt Jane. You must be tired. And we have shown you everything now. What do you think of our little nest, Aunt Jane? I think it's wonderful, my dears. The furniture and the car and the piano and the refrigerator and the radio. What's it? It's wonderful, really wonderful. And we owe it all to you. Yes, Jack, that's what's worrying me. Worrying you? Aunt Jane? Yes, that check I gave you for your wedding present? It was only 200 pounds, wasn't it? I did not put 2000 by mistake. Why no, Aunt Jane? What on earth made you think that? Well, that's all right, but I still don't altogether understand. This house it's very lovely, but doesn't it cost a great deal for rent? Rent? Oh no, we don't pay rent. But Jack, if you don't pay rent, you'll get turned out into the street. And that would never do. You have Jill and the baby to think of now, you know. No, no, Aunt Jane, you misunderstood me. We don't pay rent because the house is ours. Yours? Why? Yes. You just pay 10 pounds and it's yours. You see, Aunt Jane, we realized how uneconomic it is to go on paying rent year after year when you can buy and enjoy a home of your own for 10 pounds and a few quarterly payments, of course. Why be Mr. Tenant when you can be Mr. Owner? I see. Yes, there's something in that. Even so, you must be getting on very well to keep up a place like this. Oh, he is Aunt Jane. Why, only last year he had five shilling rise. Didn't you, Jack? Of course, that was nothing really. I am expecting 10 this Christmas. Jack, I have just thought of something. That car, is it yours? Of course, it is ours. All yours? Well, no, not exactly all. How much of it? Oh, I should say the steering wheel and one of the tires and about two of the cylinders. But don't you see? That's the wonderful thing about it. I don't see anything wonderful about it. But there is Aunt Jane. You see, although we could never buy a car outright, we can enjoy all the pleasures of motoring for a mere five pounds down. And the rest by easy installments, I suppose. Exactly. Exactly. And what about the radio? What's it? Well, that's the... 
and the piano well of course and the furniture i i'm afraid so i suppose all you own is this leg she points to one well no as a matter of fact it's that one she points to another and the rest belongs to mr sage i suppose um yes well i am not going to sit on mr sage's part for anyone now tell me how much do all these installments come to well actually actually to 7 pounds 8 and 8 pence a week good heavens and how much do you earn as a matter of fact um that is 6 pounds but that's absurd how can you pay 7 pounds 8 and 8 pence out of 6 pounds oh that's easy you see all you have to do is to borrow the rest of the money for the payments from the thrift and providence trust corporation they are only too glad to loan you any amount you like on note of hand loan and how do you propose to pay that back oh that's easy too you just pay it back in installments installments on jane is anything the matter would you like to lie down lie down do you suppose i'm going to trust myself in a bed that belongs to mr sage or mark and spencer or somebody no i am going home oh must you really go i think i would better i'll drive you to the station what travel in a car that has only one tire and two thingamies no thank you i'll take the bus well of course you feel like that about it now i'm sorry if i sounded rude but really i'm shocked to find the way you are living i've never owned a penny in my life cash down that's my motto and i want you to do the same now look here's a little check i was meaning to give you anyway suppose you take it and pay off just one of your bills so that you can say one thing at least really belongs to you um thank you aunt jane it's very nice of you there now i must be going i'll see you to the bus anyway goodbye aunt jane and thanks so much for the present good bye my dear oh nurse i want you to run and post this for me i look after the baby while you are gone certainly madam well she is gone what a tartar still she did leave us a bit on account how much was it 10 pounds phew that's great we can pay off the next two months on the car with that i i'm afraid we can't why ever not you see i i have already sent it off for something else nurse has just gone to post it well that's all right who have you sent it to dr martin dr martin what on earth possessed you to do that there now you are going to be angry with me i am not angry but why waste good money on the doctor doctors don't expect to get paid anyway but but you don't understand understand what why just one more installment and baby is really ours